Hey everyone, Andrea Fasano here for Be Terrific and welcome back to the show. We are live here from NAB 2016 at the Las Vegas Convention Center in Las Vegas, Nevada. And my next two guests are the reason, one of the reasons that I love what I do, not only in general as a host, but also being here at NAB, having this access. They are camera operators, both members of the Society of Camera Operators, SOC. You guys, welcome to the show. We have George. <laughs> I almost forgot your name, Dave. Dave. <laughs> Dave. 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 George I'm and Dave. I'm thinking of yeah. his last name. We have George Bellinger <laughs> and Dave Thomas T Thompson. Thompson. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. That was just like, I'm looking at you and I'm like, we said his name 16 times. Thank okay. you so much for being sure. on the show. Thank you. Um, you guys, such a cool career both of you have had. Thanks. And I appreciate that you're on the show together so we could kind of rift off each other. Better and talk together, about yeah. the experiences. Absolutely, yeah. yes. So um, let's talk first. We're at NAB. How do you like being here and coming to the show? Uh, it's my first time. Uh, okay. I'm, I'm a bit overwhelmed. It's a big first day for <laughs> you. Big first day, yeah. <laughs> I, had, I had no idea. Yeah, it is uh, techno geek uh, heaven here. Yes. And uh, it's it's quite impressive. Yeah. yeah all the, the technologies and uh, where the industry's headed. It's, uh, yeah, it's impressive. Now, do you get to kind of get inspired from anything that you see here on the floor? Or do you still need more time? It's kind of early in the day. Uh, I just kind of poked my head in and walked around and saw some very cool stuff and uh, yeah it kind of inspired uh, there, there's some some interesting uh, tools I'd like to put into play I think and uh, talk to some yeah some cameramen about those so are you guys gonna be here all week I, th um, I, I think we're only here through tomorrow yeah okay. I think I might spend another day yeah. I'm gonna need it just to immerse myself in everything that's out on the floor but so you're excited, they're excited. <laughs> there's a lot I could take home from here believe me yeah <laughs> um, we were talking before about your uh, big movies that you guys have been part of you George have been uh, part of Lincoln yes which was an incredible cinematic film Thank and you've you. done Joy, equally incredible. I really enjoyed that one. Thanks. And, and it, you know, most recent. And The Hunger Games. So, you guys, can you talk a little bit about these experiences? I mean, these are big blockbuster movies here. And, you know, you kind of, you come here to a show like this, and you have the gamut of people, products, companies. Talk a little bit about what it's like to be part of epic movies like that. Can you even? Wow, <laughs> that's a that's a heavy question. Is it? <laughs> yeah. That's a very heavy um, question. Is well, it kind of like you don't know where to start, or just? No, I mean it's like everything here at some point or another. As far as the technology, if we have access to it and it's going to improve the the work that we do, we would you know embrace that. But it all comes down to uh, for what we do as camera operators, it's about you know storytelling and defining that storytelling and the right tools to use to, uh, you know, put that on the screen and, um, you know, give the movie uh, a signature through what we do. For our viewers, I think that's so important that you just mentioned that, that it's really part of storytelling. So yes. past the technology and the equipment, the right. cameras, the lighting, the audio, how do you kind of use that to tell the story, like where did that really hit you in your career that you were like, "Wow, this is what it's about." Mm. What do you think, Dave? <laughs> <laughs> really, out some heavy questions. Faces are amazing. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I what George says is absolutely true. I think all of this technology is amazing and yeah. great, but if you don't have a story to support it, it's all kind of very useless from my perspective. Right. And I think seeing all this and being here is an amazing experience because I get to see things, put them in my head, talk to the reps, and then if a situation arises in pre-production where a DP or a director comes to us and it's like, Correct. how do we do this? You know, we've, we've logged this, this you know, one certain little thing or, or bigger crane that we've seen here. Right. And then you can be like, I've got the perfect tool, hopefully. Right, and that's kind of cool. One of the questions that, that I've kind of come up with was some of these businesses that are here and some of the mm -hmm. products, how would you even find them unless you were at a show like this? 
You know, You're, you can't just Google yeah. everything. I know Google's the answer for sure. everybody in the world out there, but it's sometimes not. you can't, right? No, because you need to practically see it. You mm -hmm. need to put your hands on it and understand it of what it will it will do in your scenario specifically. Yeah. Right. And that's that's an important. That's what this allows. You yeah. know. I think how it how you determine that is like where it fits into the visual language that you're going to set up before the movie, right? And how you want to use that. And uh, like David said, is being here with uh, the ability to look at it and first person get up close to it and not just you know look at it on the internet, but to interact with you know the manufacturers and the reps and uh, right. all the other uh, available resources to give you the best information when you leave here. So it might come into play in the future. Um, another question that came to mind as I was walking around the floor yesterday getting a kind of sneak peek is some of the price points on these items or certain products are really outrageous. I mean, it's kind of insane. <laughs> Sticker and I shock? Big, yeah, I mean, okay. it really is crazy. <laughs> but you kind of go, what makes, you know, Michael Artsis, uh, my co-host on the show, was kind of mentioning the fact that, uh, you know, Spielberg prefers a certain... I forget whatever it was, either a lens or a lighting, and and you're just like, well, why would he choose that over something else? And you know, kind of what makes you, as camera operators, drawn to a certain product or a brand over another, if it's a similar idea or concept? Mm -hmm. Reliability. There you go. That's a good answer. Yeah, well, I think you know, I think when we step onto a set and we need to do a shot. We just have to worry about getting that shot. Mm -hmm. We don't have to worry about if the piece of equipment's going to actually work. I think that's my number, one of my number right. in the top five I'd, I'd, things. I'd agree with that, yeah. <laughs> I, it, it has to perform and, and do it immediately, and then, and then on top of that, do it under sometimes very arduous conditions. Right. right. Uh, uh, with uh, minimal setup time, because speed and, speed and economy is everything with what we do. Yes. So time knowing money, it's going, right? Yeah, money, yeah. yeah. So you, knowing it's going to work. And then plus all the features that come with that, you know, because usually there, there's a big trade-off there and the curve is, you know, you don't, you don't get everything and if you want everything and you want the best technology, it costs money, you have right. to pay for that. Yeah. You know, it's, and if you want to do it for less than, well then you're going to be missing a few things that you might need or you might not. But, you right. know, that's what we look at when I buy a new piece of equipment or use it is, you know, what are we getting and is it going to perform? Can you then, give, oh, go well, ahead. No, then I was going to add to that and say then the other part of that equation is to take that piece of equipment and then modify it to do something completely different, which we're asked, I think, 99% of the time to do <laughs> to I'm get a so shot. It's like, okay, that. so we have this, but we actually wanted to do this. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's like, okay. Can you yeah. give me an example of that? Because I think that's a great Ooh. point that you make, uh, and I feel like our audience would love an no, example I mean, it, of that. No, I mean it happens. I, you know, it happens all the time on a movie set where they want to do whether it's a crane shot or even a handheld shot. It's you know we want to start here and we want to end there. It's like right. okay, <laughs> how do we do that? Yeah, we have all these tools lined up, but you know you have to pick the right one, and sometimes you have to modify it right there. Right. Good grips. Good camera assistance can make that happen. Now, how are you guys feeling? Well, I, I saw a jib out there, and it's uh, becoming very popular where the sensors are kind of memorizing and knowing who their subject is that they need to film, and it's kind of doing it all its own. What, is, what do you say about that as far as, like, being the camera operator? I think you have to show me where that booth is. Yeah? <laughs> is that something that gets are, are you excited? Are <laughs> That's, That's exactly fine. my get up right now and, and Is that something that gets you excited, or is it something where you're like, okay, robots well, are replacing humans? Um, well, I, it, it might well be, uh, having not observed the technology, right. but it I'll might point well it be, in, in, like I said, yeah. an, an asset, Very but cool. there's still something about the humanness operating a camera which gives it that uh, kind of uh, organic uh, tone. Yeah. The imperfections kind of, we're used to that and it kind of, it, it works sometimes. It's not so clean and automated and, and, you know, digital or clinical that it takes you out of, uh, yeah. out of the story. It's like right. reading a book, you know, how you interpret that sentence or paragraph and how it gives you, you know, that story instead of listening to it, you know, uh, you know, on audio. It's human. It, yeah. it makes it a very human experience as opposed to a video game where it's, you know, you're in a completely sort of 
I guess, robotic world or, right. or, or what those what that technology yeah. right. can do, which is amazing technology. And it does have its place. I don't know where it has it for us, but I'm sure we'll run across it. At some, well, or the VR world or something like that at all. Just, you know. Have you guys yeah, checked that out at all? That's pretty, pretty stunning. It's amazing, right? Yes. It is. It's the next frontier. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you like it. I do. Yeah. I think, it, you know, it, it, it all goes back to storytelling. Mm -hmm. And if the story supports that, I think it's, it's amazing. Um, and you were just talking about, uh, basically, with the interaction with these sensors and robotic instruments, you still have to pay attention, basically. Right? Like, that's what you're kind of oh, saying. Oh, sure. You, have like, to, you define you what's going to be w within the frame so compositionally really and being aware of, of course. Yes. Yeah. Because right. that was one of my questions when it happened. Well, the I part of that is that when you have real actors as opposed to a CG character, they're unpredictable. Mm -hmm. Right. No human can <laughs> replicate take after take exactly what they've done. So you need another human <laughs> with instincts to follow that person. And I think so we're, by having us on the cameras, it's, uh, uh, we're able to improvise. And, uh, and, and go with uh, the scene or, or the moment where I think in the automation can't. Right, right. kind of correct know, the course. There's a, there's correct. a spontaneity to yeah. it. Right, because right. not every path is what it should be. Exactly. It's not done exactly the in same every time. right? <laughs> yes, no. and so that's part of the, the filmmaking, pro the process of making it, the filmmaking part. And that's what's so great about yes. it. Do you guys want to talk a little bit about um, the Society of Camera Operators and being a part of that? Uh, sure. I know we have a few of you guys here at the show we, yeah, throughout the week. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So, how did, tell me a little bit about it. Well, I think the organization uh, stands for and uh, what we're trying to attain is to elevate the craft of operating and put that out in front of uh, filmmakers as well as uh, people interested in film and the general public about what camera operators do and uh, the importance and uh, how vital it is to the creative process of actually uh, putting together, whether it's a movie or a television show. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> he That's, said it, huh? He's pretty much said it. But I will say, for me, when I joined the SOC, I always saw those initials at the end. Mm -hmm. So I was like, yeah, you know, when I was a camera assistant coming up and when I start, first started really getting into the film business, but I, what I learned over time, uh, being an assistant and working with really amazing camera operators and members of the SOC, that it actually stood for excellence. And that was something you always, I personally wanted to achieve. Mm -hmm. And just to sure. be part of that organization is, is, to me is a real honor because I know that I'm working alongside other members like George mm -hmm. that are, they are, the best that they they can they can be, and, and that's amazing to me. Like you, yeah, you, look, at, you look at his credits, and it's like, it's like it's unbelievable. And, you know, Dave as well. It's great to be able to share that with a with a peer group of uh, tremendously uh, you know talented and inspiring uh, operators every year that deliver some just absolutely eloquent and beautiful pieces of work uh, every year. Just stunning, and I'm uh, I'm in awe of that and amazed by that and. Uh, so to be a part of that and to continue that forward and the legacy that was created before I got mm -hmm. here and before Dave got here, it's like Dave said, it's, it's an honor and uh, it's, uh, it's exciting to uh, really see what's going to take place when we have our award ceremonies at the end of each year because just some really magnificent uh, pieces of work. Yeah, it seemed like a group of people who really support each other because no matter yeah. what, you're all doing great things and you're right. all trying to be innovators and it's not, it's not yeah. like really so competitive as it is supportive. No, I, I, exact, absolutely. I, I don't think it's competitive at all. I think no. it's, you know, I could call George or email him or text him and be like, dude, how did you do that job? Right. <laughs> and he's going to tell me. It's not going to be like, oh, it's total right. inside, secret. insider <laughs> secret. But no, we can talk about stuff like that and it, it's, you know, there's, Primarily two camera operators on a job, on a, on a movie. So we need to have that, that kind of uh, information base as well that I, we can turn to other members and be like, right. you know, it, 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 it is a, a database in a sense. That's awesome. Right. And have you ever worked together? 
We have not. No. How Hope, interesting. No. Hopefully yeah. soon, right? Hopefully soon, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't happen all that much. It does and it doesn't. <laughs> Because we both uh, operate uh, uh, Steadicam mm -hmm. as well as conventional operating. Most of the time, and uh, we, I've had this conversation with other Steadicam operators and camera operators, that you know, our, our paths don't cross all that often. We're usually no. just passing in the airport. Yeah, we're passing in the airport wow. or something, yeah. Or when I get into trouble, I have to call Dave. Yeah. I'm like, uh-oh, i am you know, got to figure this out. Help me. But, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't happen all that often. But uh, when it does, it's great. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love that you said that you were you know, growing up through the ranks of camera, uh, the camera department, and you, I mean, then you look at technology of where it is right now, how much has that changed since you both started your careers? Mm -hmm. It's like exponentially, right? It has. Oh, absolutely, yeah. It's been remarkable, yeah. Yes and no. I mean, we're still shooting on film, which we, I started Very on. Very interesting point. You, know, you started on. Yes, it, of it's, course. <laughs> but, oh, yeah. It, you know, I mean, the beauty is you, you get to work with filmmakers, directors, cinematographers that do want to push the envelope of what we do. Right. And we have to embrace all the new technology. Yeah. And sometimes you go back to the, you know, the tried and true uh, methods. Right. methods. It's yeah. different but, for everybody, like Dave says. It's, it just depends on, you know, the point of view and, and the, the nature of the project and what is best suited for it, whether it's film or digital. Right. But the pace of the technology and the refinements and everything is, is has rapidly increased from That's you know, when it was, too. you know, twenty five years ago. Yeah. And uh, cool. with the advent of that it's like being here, it's good to know that. Right. Yeah. You have to be aware of it. Yeah, you can't you can't, you know, back away from it and get, you know, stuck on something because uh, you know, there there's too much uh, there's too many good things out there. You'll fall behind. You have to embrace it. Yeah. Exactly. Right? Oh, yes. Yeah. Please, that's like the iPhone. I have to change right. it every five months. <laughs> right. And right. I'm like, yeah, no, yeah. I just yeah, right. learned this one. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> right, yeah. Because some yeah, things are a little one. ridiculous that they, it is oh, just yeah. a manufacturing ploy and just a money-making thing. So sure. you have to kind of weed out the difference between sure. what's a product that's really going to help you in your right. career. Right. At the end of the right. day, it becomes, it's business, and that's yeah. what, what it's about. You exactly. Exactly. This place wouldn't exist if stuff wasn't being sold. Exactly. You know, it's it, we're, they're not. You know, you're not doing it for fun. You're doing it for fun, but at the end of the day, it's it's about business. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, you guys have been tremendous. Thank you for all the information. Sure. Oh, thank you, Andrea. Is that it? Amazing camera ops. What else would you like to say? I don't say? know. This is. <laughs> Dave wants to continue. I yeah, started with going, the hard, right? hard hitting ones, and you were well, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> We go back to that question. Do you want to talk about the different films you have worked on? Because I, I know I've mentioned a few of them, <laughs> but I mean they're crazy popular them? films. <coughs> yeah, I think so. I think some of them a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I think so. And that's I think part of the SOC right. is you know that we get to do that and and have the you know have that title associated with us and with the organization. Yeah, the organization and the, the SOC, it means something to have it, you know, at the end of your name. And uh, having that association with legacy directors and directors of photography yeah. and, and, you know, incredible crew members, that when a movie achieves success, it's great for everybody. Mm -hmm. it, it really is special. Right. And we every movie that I go into or television project, you know, I, I, you, you want the best and you want that success. You want that to be recognized and, uh, you know, that, that creative endeavor, some, some work better than others. It's, it's a hard thing to figure out when you're doing it, you know, but uh, there's always the occasion where you say, well, this is something that is never going to happen again and I'm so, you know, lucky to be there doing it. You never yeah. know. You never know. Right. Yeah, and it is an honor. With that, I'm so glad that you said as a sit because I feel like that means you've had a decent time here on Be Terrific. <laughs> it's Be Terrific. How can you be down it's about Be Terrific? terrific. Right? It's in the yeah, title. It's terrific. So is there a piece of advice oh, that you guys can maybe give to camera operators, operators out there in any form or sense of the position? Just like a little bit of advice or a tidbit or knowledge that either someone passed down to you or something that you've learned. Camera operators, be terrific. <laughs> Just be terrific. <laughs> no. Go ahead. Um, you know, what I always say when people ask me that question is, I think, be happy with, with where you can get to, but also be very humble and appreciate everyone on a set. It's not just about you. Mm -hmm. There's, it can be from two people 
to a thousand people trying to make that project or movie or whatever whatever you're doing, and you have to respect everyone that's there because right. there, there is you're all part of the same machine. Right. So just be respectful and be terrific, and be humble and just just appreciate where you've gotten and give back to the people that ask you questions. That's great. Because I think you know, that's what it's about. It's, it is about these generations that come up behind us. And right. we pass our knowledge down to them and they take it for whatever they want to take it for. And hopefully by us being appreciative of them, they pass that on to the next people that they will mentor or, or talk to. And I have to say, I think a great motivator is to really pay attention to all the different art forms that are available to people, whether it's you know painting or photography or videography and, and filmmaking, because they all resonate with each other. Mm -hmm. And to be a really good observer of that and to really uh, you know look at films and, and make notes and uh, find things that work for you or that you can you know that are inspiring and that you can you know use in the future. And that's to, a really great point. Yeah. I think that that's what I do, and, and I think it's very helpful because, as Dave says, it's all about the collaboration mm -hmm. and to, to be aware of that. And I think the more visual acuity you have, uh, the better you'll be at operating and, and, uh, and, a, and a storyteller. It's almost like having more experiences just makes you a more well-rounded person. Correct. So then yeah. you can Absolutely. bring that to the set. Yeah, sure. There's so much good work being done in, 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 in all areas. Yes. And to really be open to that and, and to be aware. Just knowledgeable of it. Yeah. Yes. You guys have been amazing. Thank you, you have so too. much. Thanks for Thanks. having us. Thanks. No problem. Really, enjoy, really enjoyed the afternoon. George Villinger, Dave Thompson. Thompson. Dave Thompson, there you go. yeah. George Villinger, Dave Thompson. I almost get caught up on your name <laughs> just because. Uh, you guys, these are camera operators from big, big movies, and they are part of the SOC. You guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been an incredible interview. So much more coming to you here live from NAB 2016. We are Be Terrific. Stay right there. We'll be right back.